Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode episode 35 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, coming to you right now uh, from YouTube at 3 p.m. It's, <laughs> I need to check what time it is because it's been a while since I've done this. It's 3 o'clock in the UK, which means it should be 10 o'clock in the morning in New York and 6 p.m. in Dubai, and various other times and locations are available. I'm just going to make sure that all systems are go. Hello from Paris, says Bill. Right, here come all the hellos. It's been a while, hasn't it? Hello from Milton Keynes. Fantastic. <laughs> Exotic Milton Keynes. Um, I'm guessing from the fact that all of these responses are coming through that things are actually are okay. Why, why do these things never ever work? I think I spend most of my time complaining about technology on this setup because I was going to just say I think we should start by smelling a perfume. Yes, are we good to go? Fine. I think we should start with smelling a perfume. Did I miss a comment? Hello from Brussels. Hello from Katowice. Hello from Niort. Thank you very much for tuning in. I will say all my hellos properly in a second. Oh, and the Perfume Society says hello as well. Hello Perfume Society. We might give a mention of this of this as yet untouched, unopened Perfume Society box in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, I hope we get a chance to to talk about it because it does look stunning. I thought I'd just open it live um, in the video, on the video. Um, okay, keep the hellos and greetings coming. I will I will say hello back, but in the interests of just getting to the nitty gritty of, of what this video is all about, I think we should start by smelling a perfume. And I think we should start by smelling a perfume from what is still one of the most important and well-loved perfume brands out there, especially because they still keep giving us this collection. It is, of course, as I'm sure you can see, it's Dior and um, the latest addition to their exclusive range, which is called Spice Blend. Rumor has it that it was um, originally going to have a, a different name, but maybe a name that may not have um, translated very well or been um, suitable for uh, the Middle Eastern market, but that is just a rumor. So they've changed it into Spice Blend, and always an exciting moment when you get something from Dior. Uh, by the way, like your t-shirt with the... Thank you very much. I was wondering who would know. Do you know where this t-shirt is from? This is actually from Zara. The, I, I picked it up a few weeks ago. Um, they, they've done a kind of limited edition Gruel range with two of the iconic images and I picked this one up so well done you don't get a prize but you get my special esteem and respect for recognizing this as a classic Dior D Dior see completely not planned Eau Sauvage image this is where I try to smile for the thumbnail so Spice Blend from Dior the latest um, addition to the Dior exclusive range and the first scent that we are smelling in, I suppose, what we can call a new season of Love at First Scent, because it's the first of the post-summer holiday episodes where we all try to get back into our horrible routines. I'm feeling a bit squashed in here. I wonder if I've arranged this chair differently. Do you know, I've done well over 30 of these videos, but every single time when I set up, it feels like I'm doing it for the first time, and I always think, well, where do I normally put the chair? Where do I normally put the lights? Where do I normally put the little tripod thing for the for the camera? And I, I, I ought to put markers on the floor, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure um, the other resident of the house would approve. Okay, here we go. I have had an initial sniff of this, but it was weeks ago, and it was a, in a very crowded setting. I, I did my best to forget it. I do remember thinking that it was good and that I wanted to return to it. So now that I'm going to have time to concentrate on it a bit more fully, I'm hoping that that initial positive response will be justified. Let's just twist that around so you can see it better. Okay, right. Mm. Yeah. Now I'm remembering why I thought I liked it or I did like it. Um, yes, and it's also kind of, now I'm remembering as well why I thought that maybe, at least at the initial burst, Spice Blend was um, an interesting name because Yes, it is spicy, and I suppose pepper is the main spice that comes across, but it's actually quite boozy um, in that kind of dry, whiskey, rum, sweetness of rum way. There's something... There's something maybe just a tiny little bit grating and 
heading into being overly synthetic overly synthetic woody at the opening but woody soapy but no i this is this is what i mean as i'm 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 not the world's biggest fan at all of of sauvage this is the new parfum version of sauvage and so i and i'm not the world's biggest fan of joy um but i've 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 turned my attentions squarely to the to the exclusive um range from dior because i think okay well Sauvage, Sauvage and Joy absolutely have a market. Sauvage continues to be ridiculously uh, popular, insanely popular, and fine. You know, people people need to wear the sense that that they like, but then they're not especially for me. I think there's a, a, a Joy EDP coming out, which I am actually curious to smell, because I wonder if they're going to take things in a slightly different direction. In the same way that there is a variant of Gabrielle coming out from Chanel, very imminently, like within the next day or so. And again, I'd be curious to smell that because it's quite often the second and third variants of these scents from the mainstream houses that offer something interesting um, because it's, it's an opportunity for the perfumer to, to maybe return to the, to the drawing board and think, okay, well, perhaps that element worked well and that one didn't work quite so well. I remember I, in a conversation I was having with Thierry Vasse years ago, the perfumer at Garlin, he said he quite often prefers the second version of whatever scent he's made because he can go back and rethink what maybe turned out to be bad choices, mistakes, for want of a better word, and then perfect the first edition, if you like. Um, but no, this is this is real aged, oaky, slightly smoky booze, um, but in that very, very elegant old world sort of way. You know, this is this is this is not louts out on a Saturday night <laughs> in town um, downing Alco pops. In fact, it, it's, it's the complete opposite spectrum of that. Um, but it's also got a freshness to it, which I suppose is what throws you a little bit. And may, maybe it's that slightly synthetic thing that I wasn't sure about at the beginning that has now turned into that freshness. So maybe it's not wanting to be overly heavy. Um, there's so many comments coming in. I, 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 sh I need to acknowledge them. I'm not, you know I'm not being rude. It's just that I think for people watching this after the live event, because most people do watch this as a, as a pre-recorded video, if you like. If I'm constantly sort of flitting forth between comments and smelling, I think it makes it very, very confusing for people watching after the live broadcast. And why can I never remember, YouTube, what I am meant to do to bring the comments back up? Please just cooperate for once. Okay, so let's do, let's see what the comments were. Uh, we mentioned Q George saying, about the t-shirt. Hello from Greece, says Nick. Hi, thank you very much for tuning in. And Stephen, hello from Harbin in China. Bought Queer Intense after your recommendation and I love it. Phew, thank goodness for that. Uh, hello from Texas, says Eric. Gosh, uh, I love all those Eau Sauvage portraits. Yes, so do I. I mean, all of Gruo's work for Dior was wonderful. Greetings from Chicago, says Taffy. And hello from Indonesia. Fahmi, happy to catch you live again. So very, very happy to be caught, sir. Um, and rocking the t-shirt says Taffy, thank you very much indeed. I, I really like this t-shirt. I was pleased I bought it. Get any creamy powderiness from Spice Blend? Um, yes, I, I think I would go along with that. Maybe more creamy than powdery. Christy says, I think the naming of that fragrance is wrong. Spicy doesn't seem to be the correct description. Mm. Well, maybe it wasn't meant to have been the name. Maybe that rumor is true. But if there is a spiciness, it's maybe a kind of cinnamon pepperiness. And then Mystery Forms Beta says, Greetings all from West Coast Canada. So th this is amazing. I've, we've already got Indonesia, Poland, uh, Texas, Canada, France. It, it's, it, it's fun to be doing this again with all of you wonderful people. Right, we do have a Spice Blend press release. In fact, we have a, we have a Spice Blend novella. I don't propose to read it all to you. Um, I think there are bits in this that are not going to be particularly relevant to our chat today because I, th I think I think there's a conversation with a chef about how he puts spices in the food that he cooks um, but let me see if I can pick out the bits that, are, that, that will be of help to us in getting to grips with the perfume um, there's a comment that I can see on there green bottle I need its review as in the Gucci why do you need a review of the Gucci I need its review also tell me please is it unisex or for ladies only? What the Dior? Um, the, the the Dior is sold as unisex, but if you are a regular viewer of Love at First Scent or of anything to do with Persil Ladies, 
you know that we don't talk about sense being overly gendered. You know, everything is fine to be worn by everybody. But strictly speaking, Spice Blend is sold as a unisex. It starts with a quote from François Demachy, Dior's creator, who says, Although I do not remember the smell of the famous Bay Rum lotion, <clears throat> I have a distinct memory of a bottle in my father's pharmacy that stirred my curiosity. Spice Blend is the fragrance translation of an exotic image stemming from my childhood. This fragrance has a warm signature underlined by an unusual crowd of spices that meet and mingle. Spice Blend is like a whirlwind, but whether it stokes the fire or refreshes us is hard to say. Now that's interesting because I've already... that's one of the first things I said, wasn't it? That Oh, there's something cedary coming through now as well. Very, very elegant. Because it's using, or, or, or it contains, materials which are obviously, obviously intrinsically quite heavy and dark, but there is definitely an uplift to it. And those dichotomies are always interesting in perfumery, aren't they? So, um, hmm, fascinating that that's one of the first things that François Damachy chooses to present about the scent. Um... I want to get to bits that are actually to do with the perfume. Uh, the young boy, hang on, where are we? With its beautiful metallic turban lid, the bottle of Bay Rum, for that is its name, caught a young boy's eye in the storeroom of his father's pharmacy in Grasse. Without ever having actually smelt it, his imagination took flight. The young boy was François Damachy, now Dior's perfumer creator, and he has brought this exotic potion to life from that remembered image. This evocation of the tropics inspired the main notes in Spice Blend, a perfume composed to be noble, warm and spicy. Spice Blend sits at a crossroad of spices with a powerful... What's that? Bay rum. That's a better description for me to... Hmm. It's interesting, that, isn't it? Spice Blend sits at a crossroad of spices with a powerful signature scent that is striking and simultaneously fresh and fiery. Yes, I, I go along with that. I think they've got that spot on, actually. While spices are generally used sparingly to add a piquant touch, uh, François Damachy created a perfume in which they're extremely concentrated. This unusual overdose of spices from all over the world reveals a rum absolute, emphasising warmth and reviving freshness. François Damachy chose Three spices carefully to ensure that they all fit together. Some are lively and piquant, soaring rapidly like Madagascan black pepper, while others carry more weight, prolonging their effect like the very caliente legendary Bay St. Thomas from the Dominican Republic, which adds beautiful woody strength. And actually, Bay could be the thing, because Bay also has a camphoraceous quality. That could be the thing that is giving it the freshness. In addition, dry and peppery Indonesian nutmeg reinforces the effect in unison with the turpentine notes of Russian coriander. Alongside them, tenacious Madagascan clove essence harmonizes with the fruity, peppery, and vanilla notes of a beautiful Chinese cinnamon. Is anybody else thinking, what a clear, prosaic, direct, and helpful press release? Thank you very much, Dior. In amongst this dry heat, ginger essence reveals an incisive beauty brimming with texture whose original temperament instills a note of sharp lemon that you can almost taste. Okay. François Damachy wanted a noble ginger free of its soapy side. This was enabled by a cold extraction method that preserves every fragrant facet, allowing a selection of the best ones for a customised result crafted by his own hand. This raw well, probably not really crafted by his own hand, but never mind. This raw material is composed and tailor-made to the highest standards. So please, they didn't go for the medium standards. To support this intense heart, a warm, spirited and effusive cedar carpets the base accompanied by enveloping and caressing musks. Ladies and gents, it does what it says on the white paper tin. Um, and then it carries on with some illustrations, very, very smart line drawings, and a little bit of, uh, which I'm not going to read now, about Dior's passion for Cuba, which I suppose they're trying to tie in with the, uh, with the rum. Uh, an interview with a chef called Jean Ambert, or Imbert, who presumably uses spices. Probably the only chef in the world who does. <laughs> but, no, this is, this is getting much, much more interesting, much better. Um, it's, I, I, I know what the, um, obviously I know what the classic choice, I'm, what I mean is I'm thinking of what my classic choice for today is, that is coming up in a few minutes, and it might make it form an interesting contrast with this, because the classic choice also takes what might be heavy materials, maintains their heaviness, 
but also adds this beautiful soft lightness at the top. And and I think Spice Blend is trying to do the same thing. What's what's the strongest at the moment is cedar. Um, with with that kind of dangerous sweetness of cinnamon. Um, so no, we like, we like very, very much. We may even love at first scent. Okay, and at this point, at the 15 minute mark, this is when I can take a breath and say, thank you very much for tuning in everybody to episode 35 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilase. This one is coming to you live from YouTube today. Um, if you are watching it live, thank you very much for tuning in. Please keep comments and questions coming. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if all is well and the technology doesn't let me down, which it so often does, then this video will remain permanently on YouTube. And if you're watching after the live broadcast, then please feel free to leave questions, ask comments. And then also it is linked through onto Facebook. And if you would like to leave a comment on Facebook, please feel free to do so as well. Do not forget, I always have to say this, do not forget that these are first impressions of perfumes and we cannot fully judge perfumes just on first impressions. And what I try to do is a few hours after the initial broadcast, in the comments under the video, I leave a little blotter update where I say how the blotters have been progressing. I may even say a little bit about what the fragrance was like to wear on skin, etc., etc. So, having said all of that, how have you all been? Have you had good summers? I know the summer's not technically over, but do tell me if you've been doing anything special with your summers. Um, this, this, is, this is infuriating because I have to keep kind of going back to small screen and then to full screen to, to, to read all of your comments. Right, so what have I missed? What have I missed? What have I missed? Aisha says, Dior, my favourite. Always I have most of them, but green one is in my future purchase. If you recommend it highly, I will definitely buy it. You, OK, well, we may have a chance to smell it, which actually reminds me that the next episode of Love at First Scent will be coming out very soon. I'm going to try, because I haven't been doing, I haven't done one for so long, I'm going to try and spoil it with another one very soon, but I can't give you the exact date yet, except to say that it will either be this coming Monday or this coming Tuesday. So please stay tuned to social media to find out when it will be either on Monday or Tuesday, probably at a similar sort of time. Um, Gucci Memoir says, I say yes. Christy says, yes, a lovely press release. I know. I mean, just like it, it actually made sense and, and it was and it was correct, you know, accurate and reflected what I was smelling. Aisha says, lots of info. No one gives this much info to, to subscribers. Really? Um, well, is that a good thing? Or are you, are you kind of saying, OK, enough now, we don't need to know. There are lots and lots of different YouTube videos out there. And, and, you know, there are lots of different viewers. There are lots of different YouTubers. And everybody needs to find their own style that they like. So and, and I've, I've just lost the comments again because I took my finger off the screen. One day somebody's going to perfect this technology. But but I hope I hope that's a good thing, the amount of information that I'm giving. Uh, da -dum, da -dum. Q George says they did try to promote this one, didn't they? We didn't hear this much when they released the previous ones. Yes, absolutely. They're pushing this one. Um, maybe it's because it's a bit of a return to what the exclusive correct collection originally started at. And Aisha has given me lots of hearts and thumbs up. And so has Lynn. Thank you very much. Uh, nice tan, by the way, Persele, says Mystery Forms Beta. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> again, I hope not too much. Yeah, I think you can see from the whiteness of the teeth. <laughs> How tanned I actually am. Yes, it has, it has been a summer spent um, in the sun for me. Uh, I, I, I need to figure out how to do this. Okay. I think, seeing as Perfume Society started off watching, I don't know if you're still watching Perfume Society or if you've sort of, you know, gone to sleep. I'm going to lift this off, these off, just hold them up long enough to say that these are three new ways of wearing Aura, Alien and Angel from Mugler. They're calling them... Uh, Perfuming brushes. Um, oh, Perfume Society, we are indeed. <laughs> Tense moment. How are you, by the way, Perfume Society? Um, there is a, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name of this of this brand, by the way, but I've just done a little tweet and an addition to the Insta story about a Perfume Society event that's, I think, on Tuesday in London for the brand Gala and Moets. <laughs> I, I actually, honestly, I don't know how to pronounce that brand. So go to the per Perfume Society's website. If you're in the London area on Tuesday evening, and if you're free, please consider going to the event because the Perfume Society's events are always, always, always well worth it. And if you've never been to one, then you know, then you really should go go to one now. Um, but if you remember, was it last year? I think it may have been last year that Mugler did perfume pens. Um, so now they've obviously decided that the, the latest solid form perfume is a perfume brush. I haven't even unsealed these yet. I, I'm sure they will be 
you know, very, very good products, Mugler products often are, um, but there you go. Um, and Lynn says, is the Dior more expensive than the other references in the range? Uh, good question. I don't know. Let me just uh, kind of do my subtle thing where I go and see if there's any price information here. No idea, but I think you will probably get the prices on their site um, because uh, I think all of that information is... Oh, Q George has already said same price. Thank you very much. And Perfume Society says, thank you, loving your video, by the way. Thank you very much, Perfume Society. All this mutual love going on. Let's all just have a great big group hug all the way from Canada to Indonesia. Right, because we mentioned Perfume Society, let me see if I can tuck those there. I am dying to open this box. Now, look, this is going to wreck my set because when I lift this up, there's going to be a great big, huge gap. Oh, no, look, the, the new glares are beautifully revealed in the gap. Isn't that nice? Now, look at this. Look, at this, this, is, this, is, this is a Christmas present and a half. This is called the Harvey Nichols and Perfume Society Fragrance Discovery Box. Um, if you know anything about the Perfume Society, you know that probably one of the best things they do, one of the most useful things they do for perfume fans, is fantastic um, boxes of samples. And not just samples, sometimes, you, you know, like beauty products, creams, grooming products for men. Really, really great boxes to sink your teeth into with lots of things to smell that you may not necessarily have normally come across. And now they have done something really spectacular looking in collaboration with Harvey Nicks because Harvey Nicks are continuing to up their game uh, as far as independent perfume offerings are concerned. So I, I wanted to open this live with you. I, I don't propose to smell every single thing that's in it because I can see from the back that there's lots of stuff in here. There's, there are things from Francis Kirkjian, from Ella K, from Experimental Perfume Club, from Lutins, from uh, Goutal, from Olfactive Studio, um, but I just I, I just wanted to see what it looks like, and and there's a press release too. Uh, Lynn's smells says, "Wow." Christy says, "Ooh." We need Batman sound effects written up here, don't we? Uh, Christy says that is a great Christmas present for me. Why don't you get it for yourself then? And Ashfark says, "Hello, Persilays and everyone. Hi, Ashfark. How are you doing?" And okay, it comes with a booklet called. Right, so so like a well, quite a substantial booklet actually, with lots to read about the scents and questions to help you reflect on. Did you miss Sauvage? No, nobody misses Sauvage. We we don't miss Sauvage. We would be quite happy. To censor yourself sometimes, Persilates. No, we we haven't missed a, a sausage, as you say. No, we haven't missed Sauvage. I. Uh, We've done a Dior today. I don't think we're going to do Savage today. Maybe we'll save Savage for Monday or Tuesday, or maybe we'll just kind of go like that, or maybe like that. Aren't I rude? Savage fans out there, sorry. Okay, we're talking about the Perfume Society and Harvey Nicks, though. So what do I do now? Oh, okay. Ah. Uh -huh. Once upon a time, there was a perfume discovery box. Now, hang on. This is like an advent calendar. Perfume Society, did you mean to do this like an advent calendar? Please respond, because we know you're listening. And if you want to ask Perfume Society any questions, you can. Okay, now there are tabs here. What do I do? Right, let's just go... Let's just go here. He says, wrecking the... Ooh, tissue paper. This box looks so lovely, but I wasn't sure I needed anything in it. Well, yeah, if you... I mean, like, the point is, if you if you don't know the perfumes, then, then it's a fantastic way to discover them. But if you do, then... But it would still make a good gift for somebody. So I have uncovered, I have uncovered Serge Lutens' Bois Vanille. Okay. I need to do another one, don't I? Do, do they all, so maybe you don't get them all in the box. Is that how it works? Oh, and I've uncovered Francis Kirkjian's Gentle Fluidity. So maybe each box differs slightly. I've got to do more now, haven't I? <laughs> and now I've got, oh, I've got three Robert Grahams and Perfume societies, yes, you can open that one by one or all at once. It's totally up to you. Thank you very much. Oh, so they are all in there. Oh, now I know this packaging. This is um, Experimental Perfume Club, on which we've done a complete video here on Love at First Scent. Okay, so we get the idea. Um, really, really great presentation. Let me just dig out. Actually, let me put it back there so we can still keep seeing it. Is that... Uh, yeah, you can kind of still see it there, don't you? Um, oh, okay, Aisha's talking to Ashfaq saying spice. Yes, we what we did from the Dior Ashfaq was spice blend and not sausage. Um, 
and let's let's reveal the sausage again. Um, let's do that. And discovery box. Okay, so there you go. That's quite a good visual there of what you get in the Perfume Society's box. Ooh, big comments coming through. What are people saying? Uh, what have we got? Uh, no creed in it, says Ashfaq. Yeah, funny that. <laughs> Tomash says, I checked Gucci Memoir, Memoir du Nordeur out yesterday at one of the perfumeries in my area and found it very intriguing, though weird. It's only my humble opinion. Everybody, everybody's opinion should only ever be humble. Right, let's let's check this out. So Harvey Nichols and the Perfume Society launch Fragrance Discovery Box. Excited to announce their exclusive partnership for the launch of the Fragrance Discovery Box, available exclusively at harveynichols.com and perfumesociety.com. Carefully created by Harvey Nichols Beauty Buyers and Joe Fairley, co-founder of the Perfume Society, the Discovery Box will contain eight fragrances from some of the best-selling brands at Harvey Nichols. And it's... Okay, so here we go. It's priced at £45, but with a value of £189, and designed to entice shoppers to experience the world of niche fine perfumery, the Discovery Box contains travel-friendly fragrances that not only open noses to new scents, but also a look into the background and inspiration behind the perfumes, and then a list of the brands that are in there, etc, etc. So that's just a little bit of an aside. I mean, we haven't smelled anything there, but I thought it's the kind of thing that you may be interested in hearing about. Uh... Okay, Aisha and Tomash talking to each other, that's fine. You're scorched, says, yeah, maybe I, I was thinking maybe it was a little, but never mind, it fades so quickly, it does fade quickly. So, um, how are we doing for time? Because that, that turned out to be a bit of a long interlude. Shall we do the Gucci? Let's do the Gucci, because I'm intrigued about the Gucci, and I'm intrigued about the direction in which the brand is taking things. Um, I'm less intrigued by their use of Harry Styles as their face, but I saw the advert. Um, I saw the advert when I went to a screening just the other day of a Quentin Tarantino movie that I didn't hate. That was unusual, um, but we won't get into film criticism here. And they played the Gucci ad with Mr. Styles at the beginning of the film. So this is Gucci's Memoir d'une odeur. Probably not the easiest name to um, translate across, across international boundaries, or to, even to say. I, I, I'm sure it must just mean memory, memory of a smell, memory of an odour. Um, something lingering, pleasantly or unpleasantly. Um, let's find out. I, I don't have tons of press material on it, just a little bit. I suppose they think that maybe Harry Styles just sells it for itself. So, Tomas, you thought this was intriguing but weird. Um, Ballad Sauvage is just amazing, says Aisha. Okay, so carrying on your conversation that right the bottle looks fantastic says Tomash and I, I do like the green actually scent memory why does that sound familiar says Q George hmm oh um that is odd <laughs> you're right um uh Cody says hi Perseus do you have any insider info on the Celine collection in a word no sorry I'm wondering if you know if and when you'll receive any nope sorry um, what I what I do want to try though is the new Jean Claude Elena for Frederick Mao. Mm. Okay, so what is this doing? It it's it's bitter herbal. You know, I'm thinking things like rosemary, tarragon, but it's also maybe a bit of cut grass. I mean, you know, maybe the green is making me think that. Um, but there is something really odd about it. There's almost something tarmac -y, um Something very, very kind of natural, mixed with something concretely... concretely urban. Q George says, would like to know what you think about the, yeah, the, the, the mouths. I, I'm interested. Medicinal, says Taffy. Um, no, that's not the word that I would instantly use to describe it. Not medicinal in the way that the, the classic choice for today might be uh, described as. I can't put my finger on this. I know it's made by Alberto Morias. Strange Roman chamomile scent, says Chris. Yeah, maybe. That kind of dryness that you get from chamomile and that slight sort of almost sticking in the back of your throat unpleasantness. Um, 
does smell of the opening smells a bit herbal plasticky to me well, yeah i would i would agree with that but it smells some of like something of the past there's nothing I and mean, I can very easily tell you what it isn't. It It isn't a sticky, obviously fruity, musky sugar bomb. Um, it isn't overtly floral. You know, it doesn't have those sort of freesia combined with peach and pear notes. Um, for an Alberto Morias, it isn't even especially overtly uh, musky. Really, really intrigued. Um, I'm so excited to try the Gucci, says Eric. It looks so much like my beloved Eau de Gucci. I'm sure that's deliberate. I'm sure the look of the bottle is, is a deliberate throwback to the past. This will this is going to have to be worn on skin. Um, I like the chamomile. It, it's, do, do, are you saying chamomile because you know it's meant to be chamomile? Bill says uh, the dry down seems rather bland for me. Well, we'll have, have to find out what it is. And Q George, kind of dusty the Gucci to me. Maybe. Um, we, we need to need the press release. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly intrigued. And, and again, hats off to Gucci for... Because even their flora was um, a very, very good tuberose for the mainstream. Uh, as I say, I haven't got a huge amount. Let me see what I can tell you. For a new Gucci fragrance story, scent becomes an explorer of the power of memories, bringing them back from the past and making them live in our present. Skipping backward and forward in chronological time, as opposed to what sort of time, the, the present and past are connected by a unique bridge that projects directly into the future. Okay. Present, quantum theory, people. Presenting a new universal Gucci scent, a perfume unassigned with a gender or a time, but just assigned... Harry Styles, presenting Gucci Memoir d'une Odeur, a gathering of a free-spirited family who embrace life by living freely and making memories together. An idea by Alessandro Michele, singer-songwriter and actor Harry Styles, leads the cast of the family with... Yes, okay. The scent. Gucci Memoir d'une Odeur is an elixir that transcends gender by its individuality to establish a new olfactive family, mineral aromatic. Well, I don't know if that's really new, but anyway... Uh, the transcendent accord features unexpected and enigmatic ingredients and is defined by a note of Roman chamomile. Okay, right. Uh, Alessandro Michele envisioned this particular flower inside the scent blended by master perfumer Alberto Morias. I guess that's all they're telling us then because then it's just the bottle. Alessandro Michele discovered a vintage Gucci fragrance bottle and was inspired by its design for Gucci Memoir du Nodeur's bottle. Grooved like a column from an ancient world, the bottle casts a refined silhouette in heavy transparent light green glass crowned with shiny gold cap. Printed gold foil, yes, yes, yes. So, okay, they're not, they're not saying very much about the scent, it's just Harry and the bottle. Um, no, I do not want to sign up to your trial, YouTube. Uh, we have got comments. Savienne saying, try Sauvage, please. Oh, I don't know if we'll have time for Sauvage today, but maybe next time. I'd love to hear an update on this one on skin. Didn't try it on skin. No, I need to try it on skin as well, actually. Um, you know how chamomile can tip over into being unpleasant because maybe it starts smelling a little bit fusty, a little bit too... a little bit too earthy. I just Googled Harry, Harry Styles. His face looks very uh, familiar. Oh my goodness, how lucky were you that you didn't know until now what Harry Styles looked like? <laughs> Though I have to say, he was very good in Dunkirk. An excellent film. It's not kind of, it's a sort of metallic sourness, a metallic bitterness that chamomile has that can sometimes be a bit too much. But no, thoroughly intrigued. And how brave to make chamomile the, the central note of a perfume. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Okay, I would like us to head into even more independent territories because I have got the latest, uh, a sample of the latest scent from a little known brand, but a brand that deserves more recognition called 2787. Can you see that? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I think we're supposed to pronounce it 2787. I don't know if it's 2787. It's a brand uh, founded by somebody called Romy Kovalevsky, who is based in Barcelona. Um, all of her perfumes are made by, uh, you know, high profile perfumes. She commissions the big houses to make them. Um, and, and 
I found them all interesting and she's kind of, you know, quietly plugging away, doing her own thing. And this is the latest one called Sonar. I don't know if any of you are aware of the brand. If not, you really ought to consider checking them out. Um, their website will tell you everything you need to know about them. And I think, I'm pretty sure I've reviewed some of them on my blog. I have no idea what this one is meant to be like or what it's meant to be about or anything. I do have a bit of press information on it. So let's find out. So this is Sonar from 2787. I don't know who the perfumer is. Shall we pop that? Let's pop that. Well, wow, let's pop it here. Okay. Oh. Oh, hang on. People talking to each other. Anna says, I'm originally from Stalova Vola. We're practically neighbours. Well, you're talking to each other. I'm 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 half Polish. Does that count as any that? Okay. Oh, it's curious. In a good way. Again, this is this is the second fragrance today where I'm thinking, what's going on here? Um, it's kind of like sweet rubber. Um, seriously, it's like you've taken a car tire and just rolled it around in sugar. Because um, it's got that. I'm, I'm actually just picturing. You know, I'm I'm not like a kind of DIY car mechanic type dude at all. But I'm just picturing. Tons and tons of black car tires, <laughs> like I've just stepped into Quick Fit. But but there's like a sugar plum fairy <laughs> sprinkling sugar on all of us. How bizarre and how very very intriguing. Um, real real strongly synthetic, gluey plasticky rubber, and this kind of vanillic maybe fruity note. Why that should be called Sonar, though, I don't know. Nobody said if, if they're at all aware of this brand. This is really, really a scuba suit, says Christy. Maybe, but doesn't, it, it, isn't that usually made of neoprene? And doesn't that kind of sort of smell a little bit like marijuana? I don't know, that sort of sweeter smell. But but yes, I suppose that, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I'm not, you know, very experienced with either of those activities, but maybe neoprene is supposed to smell sweet and sonar okay so maybe sonar is supposed to be underwater ah maybe we're getting somewhere all right let's see the, let's see the press release let's see the press release okay the scent of sound complete immersion electrifying presence sonar is inspired by transcendent escape through community and sound this perfume was named after the world famous music festival o sonar in barcelona okay though any viscerally provocative experience could take its name, which challenged Romy Kovalevsky to capture the intangible essence of vibration, trance-like union and abandon in an otherwise structured day-to-day. -day. Interesting, I, I, I didn't know about this music festival. Sonar steps on stage through white smoke and burnt cables of the electronic music festival. Yeah, b burnt stuff. And the party begins with Mediterranean bergamot, which gives the scent a bright sound of daylight, while a note of tuba rose, Okay, very subtle, shall we say, leads you into the night where deep metallic bass of woody notes takes the lead into the darker part of the party. What makes this sound especially rad, did they actually say rad, okay, is the zesty beer accord mixed with an intoxicating burnt rubber accord. That, okay, so maybe it's things like hops and something serial-like, yes, and the burnt rubber accord that runs through the veins as electrified music sound runs through the music cables. They've got something here. Um, I'm missing a few um, long comments, so let me just quickly read them. Uh, scuba suit, sweet tire, isn't that kind of bulgari black? Maybe, but I've always got, but, but this is bul bul bulgari, sorry, on a, on, a, on a strength scale, if Bulgari Black was like, you know, maybe three out of ten, this is sort of six or seven. And I've always got much quieter leather from the Bulgari rather than really strong rubber. Stephen says, Sonar is the huge electronic music festival held in Barcelona every summer. Thank you very much. Uh, Tomas and Anna are still talking to each other. Um, Christy says, just guessing about, what were you guessing about the scuba suit? No, I think it's a good guess. Uh, Stephen also says Bulgari black rubber and vanilla. And Ashfaq says, has it got any similarities with Gucci Rush, which to my nose has some plasticky, plasticky, fruity and sweet smell? I didn't think Rush when I smelled it. I mean, that was 
I always thought of Rush as being more lactonic, unless I'm getting it mixed up with another one, but... I think, I think it's the beer. I mean, you know, I'm not much of a drinker either, but... I don't mind enjoying a beer every now and then, but with beer you always get to the point where the smell starts putting you off. That maybe the, this, Especially if you live in a place with a brewery. I remember when I lived for a few years in Cardiff, the first time I actually smelt the smell of the brewery, I actually thought, I, I thought to myself, I'm not going to be able to live in this city for years if it's always going to smell like this. You get used to the smell, of course, but that strange smell of the hops and, and, and the fermentation process, it is, it is here. So, hey, you know, we went from me saying that the spice blend wasn't the smell of lager louts, and this actually lets you smell like a lager lout. I am exaggerating. It, it, isn't, it isn't at all unpleasant, but, but it's borderline unpleasant, which is, which is always a good thing, I think, with perfumery. Uh, Taffy says, no driving while wearing. No, no. Especially if it's sort of like a combination of beer and marijuana, then goodness. Um, this is turning out to be a very interesting episode. Really, really intrigued by, by the last two. So, and I, th I think it's high time we did uh, the classic scent. Have I missed any comments? No. Now, the classic scent, I looked at the list of the, the classic choices I've made so far. I'm, I'm, I hope the list is accurate. And I suddenly thought to myself, oh my goodness, I haven't done anything by this brand. So I hope I haven't got that wrong. Because I would like to show you today my favourite perfume from this brand. Have we done a have we done a classic from this brand before? Somebody's going to say, yes, you did this very one, in which case my brain is just shot to bits, too much sun. But many of you will recognise this as a bottle of uh, Tower perfumes from Tower, Andy Tower, the Zurich-based perfumer. And this is number three, his third one, which is, of course, Lone Star Memories, one of my Definitely my favourite from this brand, but also one of my favourite scents of all time. So let us smell it here. We've got lots of, ooh, love it, oh, I love it. This one is a love-hate, though, uh, perfume, isn't it? The, the, the favourite from the brand, I think, is still uh, Le Du Désert Marocain. My father tried brewing his own beer, says Eric. Blech. I do like the smell of beer in my glass, though. Yeah, beer's a funny one. I mean, but even anything, you know, even the smell of excessively smelling wine can be unpleasant. Oh, I'm just... This this is such a love-hate scent, this one, because it pulls no punches at the beginning. If you haven't tried Lone Star Memories from Tower Perfumes, I would really, really very strongly urge you to get a sample. I like this one, says Q George. Smoky leather, absolutely. I'd really strongly urge you to get a sample because it shows you, it shows you what perfumery is capable of. It shows you that the, the, the story that a perfume can tell, a journey that a perfume can take on. Whenever I'm doing little perfume talks and perfume lectures, um, if I want to convey the idea that a perfume can actually tell a fairly coherent olfactory story with a beginning, middle and an end, I quite often use this as an example. Sometimes I use Nila Vermeer's um, Ashoka, which was made by Bertrand Duchaufour. Now, this opens with a really, really powerful blast of birch tar. So it's really strongly leathery, that kind of almost harsh castorium leather feel. Um, you know, you could be thinking of maybe things like Bondi from Piguet, maybe Antaeus from Chanel. But already at the start, there's a kind of coffee note, fire. Already at the start, you, you get a sense that things are going to change. And if you're familiar with the scent, you know that by the time it finishes, it's reached this beautiful soft, tender, very gentle, very traditionally feminine geranium accord. And the whole idea is uh, the, the story which Andy Tower, the perfumer, did try to tell was of a, of a cowboy, you know, at the end of a long, hot, dusty day working on the ranches. And then he stops at the end of the day to make himself some coffee uh, in front of a bonfire. And then he, he washes the whole day away with some geranium scented soap. And it, 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 I, I can never, ever get enough of the stuff. A lot of people, the, the people who don't like it, don't like the fact that the opening is so uncompromising. You know, that birch tar hit is really powerful, and some people just find it too overwhelming, too loud. Like like a lot of Andy's initial sense, you know, like Le Maroc Purel, it, it, it doesn't hold back. But I think I think the attention to detail just makes it so beautiful, so refined. And you've all gone quiet because 
well, a few people said that they love it, but why have you all gone quiet? You should, you should, you should be, you should be joining in with my appreciation of this one. Vahush says, Corrigan is another good example of a scent that lets you really feel the story behind it. Oh, okay, I'm not familiar with that one. I don't think, unless my memory's failing me. Um, Andy Tower, I think, pulled off a similar feat. Uh, ooh, Tom comments coming through. Tomas is talking to Eric, though, but I want to see what you're saying. The smell of beer elsewhere than in one's glass is not very adorable. No, that's a good point, actually, isn't it? Beer is always okay when you're drinking it, but not when you're smelling it on other people. I know what I'm talking about, as I own Captain Fawcett's beard oil and shampoo that smell like beer. Taffy says, oh, just listening to your wonderful description. Well, thank you very much. I hope I don't put you all to sleep with my wonderful description. Um, I always have to have a backup bottle of this stuff because I cannot envisage being without Lone Star Memories, and I do have a backup bottle of this one for myself as well. I think if I ever had to compose a top five, you know, my own personal top five perfumes, um, I this would have to be in it. Oh, from, Co from the Corrigan from, from Lubin. I haven't tried Lone Star Memories, but I do love leather. Oh, you have to. You must, 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 must try it. Did I say you must try it? Uh, we're being inspired, says Lynn. <laughs> okay, fine, fair enough. Andy Tower pulled off a similar storytelling feat. Was it last year when he did Les Années 25, uh, you know, the 1925s, which was his sort of ode to Chalamar? That that was a really beautiful storytelling scent as well. Um, it's just so special, just so special. Speaking of which, would you want me to do a sort of these are my top five or top ten video? Top ten were probably a bit much. Um, or maybe we could do it in two parts. Um, of, of you know my fav my favorite um, perfumes of all time, I always I always think talking about myself is a little bit pointless because I want to tell you about new stuff that other people have made. Oh yes, please says Linz. See, I I I don't get in. I I know obviously I'm doing a video and it's my mug that I'm putting out there, but I always want it to be about these guys and not about me. Another please do. Well, we'll see. Maybe I will do a personal top ten, but I can still make it about the perfumes, right? I don't have to be talking about myself. Lone Star requires some patience for me. Do you enjoy the strong opening? Yes, I do. But yes, it, it, it does it does require some patience. That would be great, says Christy. Thank you so much, says Aisha, for your honest review about Gucci. So probably I won't go for it. Oh, so have I put you off? I thought it was intriguing. I thought it was really intriguing. But definitely try Dior Spice one you just introduced in the beginning. Would, would, I don't think you can pick five or ten, even twenty favourites. No, I know. I, w I would struggle. Uh, Anna says, Mr. Persilase, this is off topic, but can you say if carnal flower is similar to fracas? Well, in the sense that they're both tuberoses. Um, I'm looking to invest in a good tuberose fragrance and leaning towards carnal flower, but I keep hearing that fracas is a classic. But you know what my answer to something like that is going to be, allowing ourselves to go off topic for 20 seconds. Can you try them both? Have you got an opportunity to try them both? I mean, if you're in... Um, if you're, if you're in Poland, I don't know how close you are to Warsaw, um, but you must have an opportunity to try them both and just go with the one that you like. You know, it doesn't matter if somebody, yes, uh, Fracas is a classic, but actually Carnal Flower is a, is a modern classic now. So try them both. Yes, they're tuberoses, but they're quite different in their treatment of tuberose. Um, see, I feel I could wear Carnal Flower as a guy, but I think I would struggle to wear Fracas as the sort of guy that I am, you know, Plenty of guys will wear it. Uh, we've got comments now coming about Lone Star Memories. I want to do one more perfume. Lone Star Memories does settle very nicely on skin, absolutely, if you give it time, as you say. I found it something that reveals to the wearer whether they enjoy leather tarry scents or not. Hmm. Hope you can share one of your lectures with us, says Mystery Forms Beta. Um, I don't know how I do that, because they've never been filmed. You, you're kind of getting the you know, lectures. And Anna says, I'm in Toronto now. I'll try to hunt them both down. I have no idea what the perfume shopping scene is like in Toronto. Am I, are you not meant to say like Toronto? Um, but yeah, ch check them out. Check them both out. Compare and contrast. Um, I seem to remember um, Carnal Flower having more of that kind of coconut note. Uh, but okay, we're going to do one more perfume. But before I do that, just a kind of quick recap. You are watching episode 35 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilase, coming live from YouTube. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please give me thumbs up and leave comments and questions. And if you're watching after the live broadcast, feel free to leave a comment or ask a question because I usually get around to all of those as well. And don't forget, the next video will be on either Monday or Tuesday. I just need to work out exactly on which, which of those two days I can do it and at what time, but it'll probably be this sort of time. 
Don't forget the blotter update, which goes in a comment below the video, usually a few hours, sort of five, six hours after the initial broadcast. And having said all of that, I think <clears throat> we should try this. Superstitious is also love to try if you like carnal flower, says Aisha. Try superstitious anyway, although that's not exactly a tuberose. This is, this is, okay, I'm warning you, this is a new oud. Toronto, the biggest Guerlain boutique in North America. Ooh, go and sniff, Anna. Interesting, I didn't know that. Bahouche says, I love the sense that managed to tell a story successfully. Now I'm intrigued by Lone Star Memories. I was aware that it is a polarizing scent, very much so. Being a smoky lover, I might, smoky scent lover, I might be on the favoring side. You might. And Tomasz says, Mal perfumes are available in Krakow. You may as well check them both out either in Warsaw, as Per Celeste says, or in Krakow at Galilu. Um, yes, and th but now that you've done that, you have to come back and leave a comment and let us know which of them you chose. So this is, this is a new oud, people. Don't kill the messenger. Shoot the messenger. This is a new oud from Juliet Has a Gun, and it's called In the Mood for Oud. I think their first one, I don't know if there's another one since then, called, uh, the first one was called Another Oud, wasn't it? Uh, we've got a question here. Theodore says, is Lone Star better than Rien Intense? Gosh. See, I think Rien is better than Rien Intense anyway. Is it better? They're just so... You would wear Rien for different reasons, you know. I think you would wear Rien if you just want that constant nuclear-powered hit. I mean, Rien is more powerful than Lone Star. I think you're getting into very subjective areas then. I would say that Lone Star would be in my personal top five. Um... Rien wouldn't be in my personal top five, but it is a fantastic scent, and I'm sure it would be in, you know, my personal top 50, or maybe... Oh, there was Midnight Oud. Thank you very much. So there was Midnight Oud, another Oud, and now we have In the Mood for Oud. Uh, Theodore says, thanks a lot. I hope that's answered your question, though, but do you like Rien? Rien is the signature scent of one of my stepsons, which is why I can't wear it anymore now. Um, you know how it is, if you associate somebody else very strongly with a scent, then that's kind of... That, that happened with Portrait of a Lady. Portrait of a Lady was very, very briefly mine, and then Madame Persolet smelt it one day and said, Oh, what's that? And it has actually become her signature. That and Nahema from Garlin. Nahema, I should say. Okay, before I completely run away with myself, In the Mood for Oud from Juliet Has a Gun, a brand that has been, has to be said, off my radar uh, lately but let's see what they've done, whether they have managed to say anything new with Oud. Okay, anyway, this is interesting. Um, what a fascinating episode we've had so far, boys and girls. I'll tell you why it's interesting, because the Oud is actually more leather, and again, that kind of almost birch tar castorium leather that I got from Lone Star. But there's a kind of tart fruitiness. Do you know what the instant thought that came into my mind was? Tom Ford's Tuscan leather, but with a more oud-like leather note and a more pronounced fruitiness. And actually pretty, quite fecal, actually. Quite fecal. It's, yeah, well, not bad. I can, again, I can see Madame Persolet's going, hmm, and then I have to say, look, this is all I've got. Sorry, you can't use it up. Um, Again, another leather that seems to reference uh, Bondi, you know, from, from Piguet. Um, no, du no duds in this episode, lucky us. I know, it, I'm, I'm, well, unless, you know, we, we need to, we need to check the, let's not get overexcited, we need to check out the, the blotter update later. But no, 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 in the opening, no, nothing approaching a dud at all. Okay, this is, this is becoming really quite leathery rather than oody. The, the oodness, I suppose, is coming through in a, in that fecal sense. Because, because we're short of time, let me just quickly see which bits of the press release might be relevant to us. Um, song lyric, a word from the creator. What does he say? That's Romano Ricci, of course. I sat my heart on the oud. I sat my heart on the oud. Do you think he means set? Oud in Arabic derived from agar wood, the most precious and rare raw ingredient in the industry. Its cultivation goes back to ancient Asian civilizations before traveling to the Middle East, then Europe. Uh, okay, so he's saying 
It's known to be a very complex scent. Complex, aren't we all? I decided to add my own touch of mystery by twisting the oud with a top note of bergamot. I'm sure that's been done before. Its freshness covers the tracks. The woman in the mood for oud, draped in her red veil, knows how to hide her game. Sensual oriental, she casted a spell on you. Ooh, somebody should have done a little translation check. Too late, you're hooked. Um, okay, luxurious, precious, mysterious, in the mood for oud embodies women's secret desires. Burning like fire. Did you know that, ladies? A river of rubies, a pair of red stilettos, a silk lingerie set to match them with, a Bloody Mary in a Mediterranean palace before the sun sets. In the mood for oud is a forbidden fruit, the cherry on top of the cake. Irresistible. Once you've laid your eyes on her, you're already under her spell. Jolly good. Uh, right, can we get some specifics? In the mood for Oud imposes its olfactive power using its charms. Lucky us. The bergamot top note, citrusy, refreshing, dances with your senses before she reveals her true game. <laughs> I'm getting worried now. Fresh and innocent at first, she's truly sensual and animal at heart. This is a little bit too much, you know, sort of Madonna whore thing. Warm and magnetic, the notes of Oud captivate you. Already under the influence, the notes of Tonka Bean in the back complete the enchantment. Fine. Crowned with a golden cap. I'm so pleased that they're sort of telling us what the colour of the... By the way, that's not the bottle, okay? That is just a sample. This is the beautiful golden cap. Same as the Gucci. Um, okay, so we've got some more notes. A top note, bergamot, heart note, Oud, papyrus. So that'll be... Um, Cypriol, probably. Saffron and raspberry, okay. And a base note of vanilla and tonka bean. It's, it, it's kind of fading already quite quickly, but it, it, it definitely is more leathery than oudi to me with a pronounced animalic facet. Um, I've been seeing comments flashing, but I have a feeling you've been responding to some of these. Uh, no duds in this episode. Bill says, because we didn't smell the sauvage. Um... And laughter, all the more it should be. Persele's rants are classic. Are they? Oh no, don't call them rants though, because they're, they're very deeply thought out, highly considered, um, passionate. In fact, yeah, they're not, they're not rants, they're passionate, because a rant means that you kind of just lose control and go off on one. Uh, didn't know what I was missing, says Taffy, okay. And we've got a hello from Germany, people laughing at the press release, and a mystery forms beta says, I thought Oriental is now a no-go term. Really? Goodness, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, did he get the Dior? Oh, you're asking me the Dior perfume. We're, we've, we've, we've done Spice Blend, but not Sausage. Um, and Aisha says, goodbye. All the viewers, may you all have the best perfumes in the world in your collection. Love to you all. That's very sweet. Thank you very much. Okay, so blotter update coming in a few hours, but let's just have a quick re-smell of the ones we've done so far. I did also mention uh, the uh, Harvey Nichols Perfume Society discovery box. So what have we got? This is this is the Spice Blend, which actually is doing very, very well. Um, it has got a little bit soapy, but maybe that was the, the, the ginger note that was referred to in the press release. But it's still also really nicely cinnamony. The nutmeg cedar is still there. Mm, I, I'm really, really impressed with that one. I want to wear it properly on skin. The Gucci Oh, the Gucci's so strange in a good way. I mean, the chamomile is really prominent now. But other herbal notes too. I wonder if this will be really, really interesting when the weather is very, very cold and crisp. Um, it's also an interesting way of doing unisex. Because usually, usually unisex actually means something that guys could happily wear. Because stereotypically speaking, generally speaking, women will wear just about any perfume. So if you're making something unisex, you need to make sure that it appeals to men. And so you make it citrusy. But to go for something that's chamomile, is, it's, it's, it's got hints of Dior's Dune, you know, in its, in its dryness. None of the sweetness. Very, very intrigued. Lone Star Memories we know anyway. That was the classic choice for today. Um, the Sonar. The Sonar from 2787 is bizarre in a very very good way and we've only just sprayed the oud probably does what it says thank you very much for another lovely episode mr p said said ashfaq uh right i'm going to try and do this in less than 30 seconds um 
Stay tuned to social media for details of when the next episode will come out. It's going to be Monday or Tuesday, probably roughly at about the same time. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's nice to get the ball rolling again at the end of the summer. So hope you've enjoyed it and speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.